These protocols are designed to inform you on what to do with your mind during the calibration phase and the meditation training and what effects they'll have on the scores and what actual real world improvements come from them for your brain health. Hey everyone, I'm Dr. Cody, a US Navy trained psychiatrist who has been using neurotechnology like the Muse headband to improve the mental performance of myself and my clients for over the past 10 years. I'm very proud to announce that we are consolidating all of our trial and error over the last 10 years into over 20 specific training protocols that you can use at home with your Muse headband, and we'll go over a few of them in this video. If you have a different device than the Muse headband, taking a look at these protocols will still help you understand how your mind is interacting with neurotechnology and how to set up training regimens for yourself. One of the most common complaints that I get when I'm working with people who have the Muse headband is they don't know what what to do with their mind during the calibration phase or once the meditation training starts. And why would they? This is a completely new way of interacting with technology, and that's why I've been doing the work that I've been doing over the last 10 years to quantify what works and to create protocols so that you yourself can use them at home. Because people don't know what different mental techniques you can use to affect the scores at the end, what the scores mean, and how the scores actually reflect real world improvements in your brain from the brain training in the areas of focus, relaxation, neuroplasticity, or brain health longevity. These protocols are designed to inform you on what to do with your mind during the calibration phase and the meditation training, and what effects they'll have on the scores and what actual real world improvements come from them for your brain health. So just by understanding how these different mental states interact with neurotechnology will give you a huge boost in your ability to train with these tools. All right, so let's go into some concrete example of these protocols so you can actually see what I'm talking about. The protocols that we'll cover today are just a small sample of the catalog of different techniques that we've developed for our programs, but I think that they're really good ones to start with. They're called Open Mindfulness, Mathematics, Visualization Override, Cold Plunge, and Photobiomodulation Alpha. As we go through these neurotechnology training protocols, we'll focus in on three key measurement metrics within the Muse Headband app called Calm Score, alpha peak and brain recharge scores. Now Calm Score is a composite score of how well the app thought your meditation session went based on multiple factors to include the increase of alpha between calibration and meditation and overall alpha power. Alpha peak is the frequency at which the peak amplitude within the alpha band can be found and indicates cognitive performance. And brain recharge is the overall alpha power that your brain was able to generate during a meditation session. Now alpha peak can be thought of as alertness and mental agility. Brain recharge can be thought of how efficiently your brain is working. We could draw an analogy of a car. Basically, if you have high peak alpha, you have high speed, but you wanna make sure you are keeping your RPMs low or you'll burn out, and that's what the alpha recharge is. Now, the real world improvements in your brain health that correspond to these measurements are things like focus, relaxation, stress tolerance, and neuroplasticity changes. Let's take a look at the first protocol, which is open awareness. Open awareness is where you try to be fully present in the moment and is your baseline meditation state. This is also the state that Muse tries to encourage you to achieve with their neurofeedback training. If you stay during open awareness during calibration and then stay in open awareness throughout the 10 minute training, you tend to get average scores for alpha peak and brain recharge. As far as brain health metrics go, you get high levels of focus and neuroplasticity because your brain is being stressed. It's working hard to maintain its position within those brain networks to maintain your focus on your breath or whatever meditation object you choose. And as a result, you might only feel medium relaxation because you tend to have to work harder to maintain the positive neurofeedback during the meditation session. Now, I think that this is the ideal way to train with the Muse for beginners because it forces your brain to work harder to achieve an open mindfulness state and get those increases in alpha that create the positive neurofeedback and higher meditation scores. Now, let's contrast this to protocol number two of this video, which is the mathematics protocol, which overall is more of a testing protocol to show you some of these concepts at play. In this protocol, you calibrate with open awareness, but during the meditation session, you do mental math. 
You can subtract sevens from 300 as many times as you can during the 10 minutes, for example. Now, if you're doing mental math, subtracting 300, 293, and on down and on down, you'll notice that because your mind is very active, you'll get a lot of negative neurofeedback from the device. It wants you to be calm, you're not, it can detect that but you might be surprised at the end to find that although the calm score and the brain recharge scores will be low, the alpha peak will often be higher than your normal levels. This is because in order to do mental math, your brain actually shifts up the alpha peak to achieve this level of cognition. But as you see in the guide here, there's not any real world benefits to doing this with a neurofeedback system, so there's low rewards for relaxation or neuroplasticity. Now, in contrast to protocol two, the mathematics protocol, protocol number three, the cold plunge protocol, demonstrates real world improvements across the board because of the nature of the exercise in the protocol. So exposing yourself to cold plunge directly before calibration with the Muse will give you a surge of neurotransmitters that allows you to maintain open awareness and high levels of alpha brainwave activity more easily. If you do five minutes of cold plunge and then get out and put on your Muse headband, then you calibrate with open awareness and train with open awareness, it is much more likely that you are going to achieve a high calm score, high alpha peak, and high brain recharge across the board. And this is because your alpha peak naturally is elevated after the cold plunge because of the surge of neurotransmitters and the heightened alertness, but because you're not using high RPM to increase the alpha peak and instead are effortlessly maintaining that high alpha peak, your brain will run more efficiently within that state, and this will be demonstrated by a concurrent high brain recharge score along with the high alpha peak score. Now, as far as real world benefits, you're gonna have a lot more energy throughout the day, and there's some evidence for cold plunge when it comes to improving brain longevity. For protocol number four, let's take a look at another testing protocol to demonstrate a different aspect of this. You can actually artificially modulate your alpha activity by doing visualization exercises. If you do visualization exercises during the calibration, and for me, it might be closing my eyes and just visualizing a white bright light that's strobing, it will actually temporarily decrease alpha brain waves during the calibration so that when you move into the actual meditation exercise and you do open awareness training, the exercise will be much easier because the app thinks that you had this big increase of alpha because you did the visualization during the calibration. Now, it might give you a higher calm score and higher brain recharge score, but it often doesn't do anything for your alpha peak scores. And as far as real world outcomes, it might allow you to relax a little bit better because there's a lot of positive neurofeedback, but it also doesn't make your brain train very hard to achieve the alpha state. So there's a low reward when it comes to neuroplasticity. It's like weightlifting with dumbbells. You need higher weights to really train your body. And in the same way, you want some resistance to get long measurable changes in your brain to achieve high levels of alpha during meditation. So you need some negative feedback and really the visualization exercise protocol makes things too easy for you. And to round things out and to give you an idea of what our coaching programs are doing, protocol number five is the photobiomodulation alpha protocol. If you have a brain red light therapy device like V-Light, you can calibrate with open awareness and then move into the training and turn on your photobiomodulation in the alpha frequency. This will actually lead to more positive feedback during the meditation exercise and allows your brain to make reference experiences within the relaxed state. So this can do multiple things. It increases your calm score and your brain recharge score. It'll probably keep your alpha peak around medium or maybe even a little bit lower than normal. With this protocol, you'll get the benefits of high relaxation and medium amount of neuroplasticity but two of the main benefits of this protocol are the increased mitochondrial ATP energy from the red light therapy and the longevity benefits of improved blood flow and glymphatic drainage for your brain to clear out toxic metabolic byproducts that can lead to dementia over the years. So there you go. Hopefully these frameworks help you think differently about training with the Muse headband and other neurotechnology products. In truth, this is just the starting point. Other mental states that we explore in our programs include worry, distraction, single point focus, expanded point focus, geometric field lock, energetic bliss, and oneness. 
a lot of these mental states are stacked into advanced meditation protocols that we train our clients on and often combined with the red light therapy setups like NeuroPro 2 from V-Light to really supercharge your mental state. And so if this gave you a better understanding of how your mental states are interacting with neurotechnology and how to stack them properly, and you want to learn how to build your own personalized training protocols, visit www.sharpereveryday.com to take a look at the Sharper Everyday Challenge, where I teach these exact methods step-by-step step and show you how to interpret your brain data and track your brain's progress over time. We're looking for real-world brain changes from this data and these training protocols. So I hope to see you soon, but if you want to just keep watching videos and learn more, check out this one where I investigate how red light therapy can directly enhance your brain's energy and longevity. This is where I really took the time to take a look at every published study with V-Light red light therapy and its effects on cognitive performance, and I'll see you on the next one.